So if you're not a guitar player, when you think of music history, chances are you probably think of people like, I don't know, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, you know, the people that everybody talks about. But they never wrote anything for the guitar. One, because for some of them, the guitar didn't even exist back then. And two, even if it did, for people like Beethoven, the guitar wasn't really respected. It wasn't an instrument that they cared about. It wasn't even seen as a worthwhile instrument to write for. But just because some of the most famous composers of all time didn't write for the guitar, doesn't mean that there wasn't guitar music that isn't important today. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about music history as if it were told by a guitar player. Let's get started. Okay, so when talking about the guitar, we have to start with one of the great ancestors of the guitar, and that would be the Renaissance lute. This is an instrument that, if you look at it over here, you're gonna see that it looks somewhat similar to a guitar. Obviously, the body is a bit different, and there's way more strings. Honestly, they were kind of ahead of their time. So when talking about the lute, the one name that probably comes to mind for every single guitar player is, of course, gonna be John Dowland, also known as the original sad boy, because a lot of his music was basically the equivalent of emo music today. Let's take a listen to some of his sad music first. Can she excuse my wrongs with virtue's cloak? Shall I call her good when she proves unkind? Are those clear fires which vanish into smoke? Must I praise the leaves when no fruit I find? Now even though he wrote more or less just emo music of the day, he actually had some pretty big well-known loot works. Let's take a listen to this and then we'll talk a little bit more about how his music influenced the times to come later. So yes, as you can hear, John Dallin was definitely a pretty accomplished composer and probably a pretty accomplished lutenist himself if he was writing music like that for the lute. Okay, so now we're into the Baroque era and we're finally starting to see names that people might recognize. Names such as like Johann Sebastian Bach and Vivaldi. But again, those guys didn't write for the guitar even though the guitar started to exist somewhere towards their end and they were writing for the lute. but. Not really the same thing. But when it comes to music for the Baroque guitar, a piece that comes to mind for me is going to be Canarios by Gaspar Sands. This is one that probably every guitar player has played, probably on the guitar, and some may not even be aware that it was written originally for the Baroque guitar. Let's take a listen to it and then we'll talk a little bit about the Baroque guitar and some other Baroque guitar pieces. Okay, so I think we can all agree this is starting to look a little bit more like a guitar. The strings are doubled, very similar to a 12 string guitar today, except there aren't 12 of them. But the big thing that you might notice is the role of the guitar is much different than it was even for the lute. For the lute, you could say it's definitely much more plucky, right? Even when accompanying a singer, it still has that kind of plucking, accompanying feeling. With this, it's almost very strum-like. Even when you have single notes, they're oftentimes followed up by some strums or rascato. Back then, the role of the Baroque guitar was an instrument that was meant more so to accompany a singer or accompany in a larger ensemble. Honestly, very similar to how it is used today. But pretty soon that's gonna change, so let's head on over into the classical era and see what's up. Okay, so when we're in the classical era, we start thinking of some other names that you might be familiar with, people such as Mozart and Beethoven. And you know, the guitar was actually very, very close to being invented, and yet these guys still didn't write for it at all. Now this is probably because they didn't understand the guitar as an instrument that you even could write for. Writing for the guitar almost probably seemed kind of silly. So much like many of the music back then, we start to finally have a little drama in our music. You know, this is where we start seeing pieces by people such as Fernando Sor and Mauro Giuliani. The piece I want to show you for this is going to be the Fernando Sor grand solo, and I'm going to kind of skip around a bit just to show you where it goes from dramatic to where it goes to exciting, back to dramatic, and then all that stuff.
Okay, so in watching this video, the first thing that you notice is finally the guitar is looking somewhat familiar to us. It looks a little different still, but it has six strings and something that we could probably play if we picked it up. If you're a guitar player, that is. People like Fandosaur, this is the guitar they played on and wrote on. And because we have copies of them, we're even able to make replicas that look and sound and probably feel very similar to how they did back then. And believe it or not, Mario Giuliani and Beethoven actually crossed paths. From what I remember, Mario Giuliani was playing cello in Beethoven's premiere of his Ninth Symphony. So as I'm sure as you can guess, that meant Mario Giuliani, aside of being an amazing guitar player, teacher, and composer for the guitar, he must have been a pretty good cellist if he was asked to play with Beethoven in his premiere. Just an interesting fact, and I also wish that maybe inspired Beethoven to write some music for the guitar, but oh well. Okay, so we're almost done. We are entering into now the Romantic era for music. And in the Romantic era, we start seeing composers in the modern scene, such as Beethoven again, but also people like Chopin, Schubert, people that we want to probably be pretty familiar with if you're an overall music appreciator. But this video is about guitar, so let's talk about the guitar side. This is where we finally get a guitar that's honestly almost, if not the equivalent to the guitar we have today. We have people such as Francisco Tarraga playing guitars made by Torres, which is pretty much the predecessor, if not the one that made the guitar we have today what it is. So we're very, very close. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about what was going on before that. And I think one of my favorite examples of this is going to be the music played by Johann Kasper Mertz. Johann Kasper Mertz, of course, was an amazing guitar player as well as composer, and he wrote tons of stuff for the guitar. And the romantic guitar just has that really that sweet sound. As I'm sure you can guess from the romantic era, it's less dramatic and more romantic, I guess we could say. Anyway, check out some excerpts from the Mertz Tarantelle, and you'll see what I mean by that very romantic-like thing. And I guess, again, picture people like Schubert and Chopin when you're thinking of this. Okay, and last but not least, we are in what's known as the 20th century, aka also the modern era for guitar. And you know, I was gonna list a few pieces here, like I mentioned earlier, but I kinda changed my mind halfway through. But what I think I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna leave it up to you guys in the comments to share your favorite modern pieces. And I know that there is so, so many of them. There's music by Leo Brower, there's music by Augustine Barrios, there's music by Benjamin Britten, there's music by Andrew York, Roland Dion's, and then that's not even including all of the jazz and rock stuff that was going on at the time that even influenced the classical guitar music we have today. So there's just too much to talk about. So let me know what your favorite modern pieces are. And also while you're at it, go ahead and let me know what your favorite pieces are from each of the other eras as well. I'd love to hear what you say because the ones I mentioned are just ones that I'm familiar with that I like and that I want to share. But again, there's so much stuff out there. So I'd love to hear some other opinions. Anyway, that's all for this video. I wanted to do this video for a while, just something fun, sharing the history of the guitar. I'm probably gonna go into more depth and do each era in particular once I have some suggestions and once I have time to really dig into it. So this is kind of just like scratching the surface, we could say. Anyway, if this was your first time here, hopefully you liked what you saw and you want to learn more about the guitar. If you do, head on over to my channel and check out some other videos of mine. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and all that other good stuff. So that way you can see more videos about classical guitar. I have a lot of stuff planned, so thank you so much to all of you guys for subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.